All right, boys and girls, the purpose of today's video is to talk about chain bridges and what all this crap really means. And what do they do? What's the purpose of them? Um, there's a lot of guys that probably know what they do, but <clears throat> for a long time, I didn't really understand the purpose of them. I knew that they were the help three wheel. That's basically all I knew. And really up until the point where I started diving into putting my own chain bridge in, I still didn't understand how they exactly worked. All I knew is they worked. So the, the reason why a chain bridge works to help you three wheel your car is because of a pivot point. And basically all it's doing is it's, it's creating a pivot point for your axle to push off of. So if there's no pivot point, when your one rear cylinder starts to push up, it's actually gonna raise the whole back of the car with it. Instead of having a pivot to push that cylinder up and push the other side of the car back down. So that's, that's, it's just like a teeter totter. You're, you're adjusting where your frame of your car is going to pivot. That's all it's doing really. So in my detailed illustration here, so you can see when this cylinder gets up high enough, this chain gets tight. This chain doesn't do anything. So whatever side you're trying to three wheel, that's the chain you really need to worry about. So when this gets tight at this point, and that cylinder's raised to that point, and your chain's tight, you can actually hear the chain getting tight and you can feel it. So when this cylinder goes up any further from this point when the chain's tight, it actually makes that frame pivot right there. Pushes this part of the frame up higher, which makes your front wheel hopefully lift off the ground if you have enough stroke here. And it also pushes this side of the frame down to the ground. Now without any sort of chain in there, all you're doing is, let me see, grab a piece of metal. That's your frame. That's your frame now, okay? Don't judge me. If you came here to judge, I'll show you the door. If you don't have a chain there, when you raise up this side, it raises up your entire frame rail, or your entire frame. So you keep raising, and you might get to the point where you can get everything up high enough to maybe pull that, that wheel off of the ground, but at this point, you're really high in the air, and most people don't have 30-inch cylinders to be able to do that. So with a pivot point, the frame is not moving past this point. So when you raise up on this side, see, it'll push this side down to the ground, make this side go up in the air. Now, there's people that'll run their chains in different configurations. You can run them out here, which you do that. Look at how, how high that got at that point. So that got, if we put the chain out closer to the cylinder, that's where we're at. Put it back here. Raise it. I'm going to raise it until this gets close to the rear end because that's about as far as you can go. Look at that. Got a little extra height. So we're able to get up a little higher the further towards the center that we got. Now, let's do it over here. Same. So. The further to the center you can get, the better. Now some people I've seen actually X them, or they'll run a chain from here, cross it over to here, and this one over to here. Now in that case, it's getting pretty extreme, but say you put your pivot point right there, I mean, you're getting pretty nutty. You're getting pretty nutty at that point. Now a lot of people, uh, like myself, will have trailing arms that run up to the frame off of our rear end, which, kind of affects the ability to run an X chain. So for me, this is how I ran my chains. I ran it from the outside close to the cylinder in. Um, if I had to do it all over again, I would make sure that the, the chain mount is as close to the cylinder as possible. And this mount was as close to the inside as I could get it um, if I had to do it all over again. 
because it, it does help. Now, this creates a ton of pressure on everything. So when you run a chain bridge, you need to reinforce where your cylinders are mounting. That's what this is here. This is not just your factory spring perch. You need to put in some sort of heavy steel in order for your cylinders to sit in and for your chains to attach to because this is under a lot of pressure. When you're pushing up on your cylinder this way, this point is on a lot of pressure to go down. So you need something really rigid. C-channel, I've seen a lot of people use C-channel without any issues, um, but I have seen C-channel buckle under that kind of pressure. Um, pretty unlikely, unless you're getting real stupid. So um, just reinforce that however you need to, so that way wherever you're pulling off of can hold the pressure because these cylinders, I mean, they're lifting a car, no problem. I mean, they can make a car jump in the air. There's a lot of pressure that goes through there. Um, and also, these points right here are under a ton of pressure. So when you're raising up, this is pulling down, this is pulling up. So this is pulling up here where your chain is. This is pushing down towards the ground. So. If you don't have a reinforced rear end and a chain bridge, you can actually push from this point, because this is pretty secure through here where your chains are. You could push your rear end down right there and actually bend your axle tubes. So that's why you see a lot of people running some sort of, some sort of reinforcement. to help strengthen those tubes. So that way there's, there's more steel there that it's going to need to bend. Um, and some people will run you know, a, a C channel across the whole top of their tubes also. That can help. So there is a lot of pressure with those. That's why you wanna reinforce it. Don't be stupid about it. Don't just put on a chain bridge or try to tack weld some chains to the underside of your car. So that's how it works. It's a teeter-totter, basically. You're putting a freaking teeter-totter in the back end of your lowrider. That's all you're doing. You're, you're causing a pivot point so your, your whole back of your car isn't raising up in the air. Because I've tried to three-wheel this without chains and it, it just raises up the back end of the car, kind of crooked. But the whole back end raises up. Uh, these cars don't have enough weight in the back end to hold the corner you're not trying to raise on the ground. If you have a ton of weight in the back end, I know a lot of like 64 Impalas that year with the real long trunks, they have so much weight back there they can actually hold the corner you're not lifting on the ground. It just kind of sags there like a wet diaper. Don't take any offense to that, 64 Impala owners. But my car, pretty short quarter panels, and there's not much there to actually be able to hold enough weight Unless you just want to get orange Monte Carlo status and fill that sucker up with whatever weight you got. But um, yeah, so that's it. That's it. Let's, uh, let's see what a chain bridge actually does. I'm going to roll down my window, make it a little easier. Please excuse all the popping and nonsense you're about to hear. I've got a rear spring that's not sitting quite perfectly. It makes a little noise. So in order to three-wheel your vehicle, you want to snatch the front up, drop the back, bend the corner on three. Whatever that means. I just seen a mouse. Hey, my garage mouse. Get out of here. Anyway. So in order to three-wheel your vehicle, uh, you want to raise the front up all the way. Yeah. Sounds like I need to lube something. And then you want to pick whatever corner you're trying to three-wheel. If you want to three-wheel your, your left side, you want to obviously raise the left rear of your vehicle. If you don't know, you need three pumps to do this this way to, to raise three wheel. If you 
have a 64 Impala and you want to raise up the whole back and dump one corner, it'll probably three wheel, but to do it like this, you need to have three pumps. To be able to control each rear cylinder individually, you need three pumps. So pick whatever side you want to raise up, start hitting the switch, tap it. You're gonna, you probably hear it even on camera, the chain get tight. Right there. That chain's tight at this point. Now, I'm gonna tap it again. See, it's starting to, to pivot now. So now that chain's real tight, now the cylinder's pushing that side of the car up, this side of the car up, and it's actually pulling that side of the car down. I'm hit again. Starting to tip. Boom. You're officially a thug at this point. You can check your suspension on the side of the road, which I've done. So, no matter what happens to you in your life, from this point on, you can say you were once a thug, which is the whole goal I was going for. But, you gotta remember, mm -hmm. it's real expensive. So let's get some light on the situation. All right, so this is kind of a, an odd angle always to videotape underneath the vehicle, but so as you can see, I got my power ball and then my chain mount right there. Like I said, if I had to do this all over again, I would put that chain mount over here. Would make it kind of difficult with that little vent that's there for the rear end, but um, maybe I would at least move it as close to that vent as I could. And there's the bridge. So you can see where it attaches right there. Um, I actually made multiple attachment points underneath the car so I can play around with this without having to get underneath here and weld on new tabs so I could see what works the best for me. Um, but I moved it to the middle point. Well, the most middle point. I was actually going to try to uh, X them underneath the car, but it hits my trailing arms. You can see right there, it kind of rubs on the trailing arms a little bit. Um, really no way around that. Um, I have seen before a design anyway, not actually personally seen somebody use it, but somebody that ran a chain on the middle of their uh, pumpkin up to the middle of their chain bridge, just one chain. And that would probably work. I mean, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. But there's a shot of the chain bridge, what I built to hold all this. Um, I used flat steel and kind of made a little channel for everything um, and reinforced the top side of it. I got a video on me making this piece of steel. It's super heavy. Um, it seems to be holding up okay. Uh, one thing I have noticed from three-wheeling the crap out of this thing, I mean everywhere I go I'm three-wheeling, is the, uh, the springs are not holding up too well. They're just the factory front springs, but they really don't like it. There's a whole lot of pressure right in, in there. So I'm going to have to get some heavier springs to be able to hold that. But yeah, you can see that that chain gets real tight. This one on this side gets really tight and it actually pulls the other side of the car down and lets this, this side raise up. Um, and yes, I have a jack stand underneath the here because let's be honest, people, this is super unsafe to be underneath a car that's three-wheeling. So yes, I got a jack stand underneath there to be able to lay underneath the car because don't put your faith in a little O-ring. That's all that's holding this car up. All that pressure I was just talking about that can bend your rear end and bend your C-channel and all that, all that pressure is being blocked by one O-ring currently in my Delta dump. And if that O-ring blows out, it lets all the pressure out and your car will slam down. So those pictures I see people taking, like with the, the girls with their, you know, their whole hooter hanging out and they're like up underneath the car that's 3-1, up underneath the tire in the air, that's stupid. Don't do that. If you're at a car show, Really, I don't, I don't like to park my car 
on three at a car show because it's pretty dangerous because little kids come up and they see that and they, they get all excited that the tire's off the ground. I mean, it ain't, it ain't huge, but it is off the ground. They get all excited and they go up there, they start looking at it, they put their feet underneath of it and they're walking around. They don't know any better. They don't know that that car could come crashing down on them. I mean, it's pretty easy to happen. So, if you're if you got your car at a car show parked on three wheel, just be close to it. Don't don't walk away. A lot of people walk away. Um, I mean, even the the jolt of the car coming down. This car slams down. Let's just see what it looks like. It's not too pretty. So it, it gets all crazy when it comes down. So yeah, don't, public safety announcement here. Don't leave your car unattended on three wheels where people are gonna be walking around it. If you're parked in a parking lot and you put it up on three, whatever, it's, so they're bad if they get that close to your car anyway, but just be cautious because I've done it. I've parked my car in front of my house, three wheel, came back and the car was no longer on three wheels. I just hope there wasn't a squirrel running underneath of it. But yeah, that's how you three wheel with a chain bridge and three pumps. So a lot of other ways to three wheel. With two pumps, you can just whip a corner, dump a corner, whatever opposite corner you want to three wheel down while you're turning and it'll pull the front wheel up. So you can still three wheel with two pumps. You just ain't gonna be able to do it in your garage sitting still unless you have a lot of weight in the back end. So that's how a chain bridge works. Um, I probably explained that completely wrong and uh, upset a lot of people, but that's fine. I've been mad before. It's not that bad. <laughs>